Here the topic for discussion is motion of a charged particle in a magnetic field. In that case 3 we are discussing here. That is the movement of a charged particle at an angle to the magnetic field. In case 1 we discuss the movement of a charged particle parallel or anti-parallel to the magnetic field. In that case the value of theta is equal to 0 or 180 degree. In the second case, we consider the moment of a charged particle perpendicular to the magnetic field. There, the value of theta is equal to 90 degree. In this case, other than these three values, that is 0, 180 or 90, any general value of theta we are considering. In figure, we can see a charged particle Q. It is moving in a magnetic field with a velocity V. Here, the magnetic field is in the x direction and theta is the angle between velocity and magnetic field. The value of theta, any general angle we are considering, that is other than 0, 90 or 180, any value of theta we can consider here. Here, the velocity vector we are resolving into two components. In that, the x component Vx is equal to v cos theta. In figure you can see v cos theta and the magnetic field both are in the same direction. That means v cos theta is the component of velocity along the direction of magnetic field. Now the y component vy is equal to v sin theta. That is v sin theta is the component of velocity perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field. So these two points are important. V cos theta is the component of velocity along the direction of magnetic field and V sin theta is the component of velocity perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field. Now we will see case 3 in detail. When a charged particle is moving parallel to the magnetic field, the value of theta is equal to 0 degree and force will be equal to 0. This if we combine with the present situation, in the figure V cos theta is parallel to the magnetic field. That means the charged particle will be moving with constant velocity V cos theta along the magnetic field because no force will be acting on the particle when it moves parallel to the magnetic field. Now, when the particle is moving perpendicular to the magnetic field, that is theta is equal to 90 degree, then force on the particle will be maximum and particle will be executing a circular motion. Here, in our diagram, V sin theta is perpendicular to the magnetic field. So, the particle experiences a force and tends to move in a circular path. Here, the centripetal force required to move the particle in a circle is provided by the magnetic force. This point we use in case 2 also. The expression for centripetal force is mv square by r and the expression for magnetic force is qvb sin theta. So we can write mv square by r is equal to qvb sin theta. Here, the only one difference in place of V, we should substitute V sin theta. Because in this case, V sin theta is the component of velocity which is responsible for circular motion. So, we are getting the equation like this. If we rearrange this equation, we can derive the expression for radius of the circular path. In equation 1, you are getting the expression for radius of the circular path. Next is time period. As in case 2, here also we are taking the expression for time period as circumference of the circle by speed. If r is the radius of the circular path, the circumference of the circle will be 2 pi r. Here, for velocity we are giving the value v sin theta. Because in this case, V sin theta is the component of velocity which is responsible for circular motion. And we can substitute the expression for radius from the previous equation. 
So, we will get the equation for time period like this. After rearranging the equation, the equation for time period, we will get an equation 2. Next is frequency. It is the reciprocal of time period. So, equation 3 represents the equation of frequency. When a charged particle moves at an angle to the magnetic field, the charged particle will be under the combined effect of two components of velocity. It moves along the direction of magnetic field due to V cos theta. At the same time, it moves in a circular path due to V sin theta. Therefore, the resultant path of the particle is a helix. In figure, you can see the actual helical motion of the particle. So this is the situation in case 3. You can see the moment of a charged particle in a magnetic field. In figure, you can see the parallel and perpendicular components of velocity. You can also see the helical path of the particle. Here, we are defining a new term, pitch. It is the linear distance travelled by the charged particle in one rotation. We can write distance as speed into time. Here, pitch is a linear distance, so we can use this formula. In place of speed, we will use V cos theta because it is the component of velocity in the linear direction. And we are taking the time for one rotation. So in place of time, we should substitute time period. So the equation of pitch will be V cos theta into T. Here we can substitute the expression for time period. Then the equation for pitch will be like this. These are the important things in case 3. You can see the moment of a charged particle in a magnetic field. Here, the magnetic field is in the x direction. At the starting point, the velocity of the particle is v. And theta is the angle between velocity and magnetic field. In figure, you can see v cos theta is in the direction of magnetic field and v sin theta is perpendicular to the magnetic field and v sin theta is responsible for the circular motion. You can also see the spiral path of the particle. Here we are discussing the motion of a charged particle in a combined electric and magnetic field. First we will discuss about velocity selector. What is a velocity selector? A velocity selector is an arrangement which will help us to identify single velocity particles. That means it will identify all the particles which are moving with a particular velocity. Now, how is this velocity selector is related to what we have studied in the last slide? Here, we are going to study about crossed electric and magnetic fields. What are crossed fields? When electric field and magnetic field are perpendicular to each other, they are known as crossed field. In figure, you can see the moment of a charged particle in a combined electric and magnetic field. The particle is moving with a velocity v. Here, the direction of electric field is in the upward direction. Here, we represent the magnetic field with dot. That means, the direction of magnetic field will be coming out from the plane of the paper. Here, we are defining velocity selector. Velocity selector is an arrangement of electric field and magnetic field perpendicular to each other. When charged particles enter that region, particles with a certain velocity can pass through that region. In figure, you can see a group of particles are entering in the combined electric and magnetic fields. In this, particles with a certain velocity can pass through that region. And the magnitude of that particular velocity we can select. For that we can use this equation V is equal to E by B. When a charged particle is moving in an electric field, the force experienced by the particle F is equal to QE. 
here the direction of force will be in the direction of electric field now when a charged particle is moving in a magnetic field the force experienced by the particle fm is equal to q into v cross b the direction of this force will be perpendicular to both v and b here the particle is moving in a combined electric and magnetic field so the total force experienced by the particle will be the sum of these two forces that is f is equal to qe plus q into v cross b in figure you can see the theoretical arrangement for velocity selector here electric field and magnetic field are perpendicular to each other and they are also perpendicular to the velocity of the particle here the particle is moving along the x direction so we can write the velocity vector as vi here the electric field is along the y direction so we can write e as ej the magnetic field is along z direction so we can write the magnetic field as bk here the electric force on the charged particle f e is equal to q e that is the direction of force and direction of electric field will be the same in figure you can see the electric field and electric force f e both are in the plus y direction now the magnetic force on the charged particle f m is equal to q into v cross b if you substitute the value of v and b you will be getting the direction of magnetic force in the negative y direction in figure you can see the magnetic force fb in the minus y axis here fb and fm both are representations of magnetic force so from the figure we can see the forces fe and fm are in opposite directions if the value of electric and magnetic fields are adjusted such that the magnitudes of these two forces are equal then the total force on the charge will be zero if the total force on the charge is zero then the charged particle moves straight without any change in direction if we substitute the values of electric force and magnetic force we can write qe is equal to qvb from this relation we can write velocity is equal to e by b this condition can be used to select charged particles of a particular velocity that means if we want a particular velocity we should adjust the values of electric field and magnetic field in such a way that e by b should be equal to v thus the cross electric and magnetic fields can be used as velocity selector the cross electric and magnetic fields can be used as velocity selector j j thomson used this method to determine the ratio of charge to mass of an electron this principle is also used in mass spectrometer to separate charged ions according to their charge to mass ratio here you can see the actual working of velocity selector in figure you can see the crossed electric and magnetic fields a group of particles are entering in this combined electric and magnetic fields here only the particles of a certain velocity are coming out from this region